On this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, David and Kate discuss their experiences with The Wind Waker. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Another Zelda Podcast. I am David Geisler here with my co-host, Kate Fisher. Kate, how are you? I'm good. Thank wow. you. Wow. <laughs> I try to wow. answer it differently every time. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. want to be boring. I'm always good. So <laughs> this time I'm good. Right. Yeah. It's, an, it's a positive word, but it was like an odd and negative expression. That's, oh, I'm um, doing very well. That's actually a good representation of my personality in general. Oh, is it? Positive, but in a negative representation. <laughs> That might be true. That's really accurate. Eh, perhaps, perhaps. Huh. Kate Fisher, we are uh, going to be reviewing, as as our audience is perhaps starting to now learn, that we kind of do these review episodes every couple episodes of games. Mm-hmm. We've reviewed Link's Awakening, Twilight Princess, and now we are reviewing Wind Waker. Yes. We did a pseudo Breath of the Wild review, but that was a different, that was kind of more like end of game thoughts. Yep. And our reviews, they're Kind of just our emotions on these games, just rundowns. We consider ourselves to be like an emotional podcast, not necessarily a technical podcast. So it's more just speaking about our experiences playing the games. Zelda makes me very emotional. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I've seen many a tear come from... I don't know. So or, many. So many. So many beautiful moments. So uh, we're going to talk about Wind Waker, but actually I wanted to share a, a, an iTunes review that we got this past week. Cool. Um, let's see here. Kind of cool. Arcus underscore Elite uh, gave us five stars, which is super cool, super awesome, and said, I just found this podcast and love what is happening with the conversations and how deep they go with almost every game in the Zelda timeline. Good job and keep up the good work. Big ol' smiley face. Yay. Thank you very much, Arcus Elite. That's, That's really awesome. kind. I know, it's very exciting. It's very, it. very exciting. So we're going to be talking about Wind Waker today. And um, just to start things off, Kate, I know that you played the GameCube version. Mm-hmm. And I think you are aware that I actually chose to play the Wii U HD version. Mm-hmm. I've, I have played the... Is Milo literally knocking books off? He's sh- knocking books over. It's fine. My right. cat is being very destructive right now. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, he's just really putting some love on those library books. Yeah. Wow, look at him go. Mm-hmm. Literally pushing them off the table. So it's, anyway, it's um, so you played the GameCube version. Yeah. I played the Wii U HD version. It's and I, I have- Probably looked a lot better than mine. So that is one of the positives I have to say about Wind Waker is that it did look stunning, in my opinion. I know that there's some people feel the Wii U HD remake takes away some of the aesthetic because it makes things at times a little rounder again and takes away some of that flat shading. Hmm. But I feel that Nintendo did a really nice job. They incorporated a new lighting system, and I can speak to all that in a little bit. Okay. But um, I did play the GameCube version back when it came out. I still own the GameCube version. Mm Mm-hmm. So I'm slightly aware of that as well. You might even remember in our first or second episode of doing this show, I toyed around and I put my GameCube disc in my Wii and plugged in a GameCube controller and I was talking about the inverted camera and how it was kind of rough. Yes, that's right. Um, So that's one of the reasons why I chose to play HD because I could get the non-inverted camera stick. Gotcha. And also I was just curious to see what that that remix that remake was like anyway. So before I get into it, um the GameCube version came out in 2003 in America, mm-hmm. 2002 in Japan. It's actually the 10th Zelda game and it's directed by IG e- uh, no <laughs> IG Anuma. And um let's see, Koji Kondo was one of the composers with a few other people. Koji Kondo wrote many of the famous Zelda classics. Mm-hmm. So for you, what is Wind Waker? to you and for you. And then I want to talk a little bit about the Wii U update. Oh boy. Let's see. Wait, so, why did we cho- why did we choose to do this next? Um, I think because you were already kind of playing it and I was uh, like, Oh yeah, I'll play that one again. Yeah. I remember liking that one. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think it was just kind of random that it just seemed timely. I'm cool with and it. Convenient. I think you said <laughs> something like, Oh, if I really try, I think I can get to the end. Yeah. I felt like I had enough deadline. time to to complete it which i did yay right uh which i was not able to do with link's awakening so um i and i almost finished twilight princess i was like at the last boss you like got to zant or something i think and then i was like nah um (laughs) because that's not a part i really care about you missed all the good stuff at the end so uh, i've seen it before i did i have beaten the game before just not this last time so wind waker is I, I like it because it is so different. Sometimes I don't like it that much because it is so different. Hmm. Um, 
It's still a great Zelda game, I think, overall. Um, to, I remember I actually had to re-find it for GameCube. So I had had a GameCube. I, uh, as, as I've said before, jokingly, I lost it in the divorce. <laughs> like, so my, my ex-boyfriend ended oh. up with it, I think, or something oh, like wow. that where I didn't have it anymore. Or I sold it or t- I, I don't know. Sure. Remember. I get it. No, um, I've never heard that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I had to, or I think I, I kept the GameCube, but lost the games or one or the other. So I had to mm. refind this game and it's not super easy to find the GameCube. Not as much these days. Version. Like I, I think I tried to find it on ebay or something way back in the day but i cared enough to go find it again like i I liked it enough to go back i really wanted to play it again i remember it being cool i remember it being a little tedious sometimes which it still is but overall um i really like excuse me the beginning of the game and it starts off very strong the story and then i kind i think i kind of forgot that the end of it is just kind of like meh i forgot a little bit about the second half myself and i have thoughts yeah, so I I re I was happy to replay it because of the beginning. Um, I like the different look to it. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't played a lot of the handheld games, so I haven't been like oversaturated on this look. Mm-hmm. I've only played Wind Waker, so it was still kind of cool to go back because I hadn't seen it in a while. So we're kind of reviewing, so to speak, this game in the context of almost like a replay, aren't we? Which is fine with yeah. me. All right, cool. I do remember the first time I played Wind Waker, I was, as I've said a hundred times, not super excited. But I, I liked cell shading. Um, I was really excited about Beautiful Joe and other games. But um, with with Wind Waker, I wasn't sure. But I do remember as soon as I started playing, I was very impressed that the even though the aesthetic was simple, the graphics were kind of still complicated. And what mm-hmm. I mean is there's like a lot of solid physics running. You, If you walk through the grass, it moves. If you bump into mm-hmm. a bottle, it rolls. There were things that did certainly did not happen to Majora's Mask and right. Ocarina that were happening inside the engine for Wind Waker. And so once I got in, there's a lot of cool physics with ropes and even some of the bad guys have certain kind of oh, loose, yeah. floppy physics and stuff like that. And I was very impressed by that. So yeah. it kind of came around. I was like, oh, there's still a lot going on here computation wise or graphics wise. They're just choosing this significantly. Um, it's like misleading almost. A little bit. And I think at simple. the end of the day, they did that so that they don't have to render the ocean. The ocean is absolutely just PNG wave files put over like a blue solid background. And that probably saved a lot on processing power. I get it. I actually forgot that the ocean changes. That it goes from the undulating one to, to the flat, wave one. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of forgot about that. No, in the HD remake, they kind of texture the ocean. They actually render it with some actual Mm. polygons now and stuff like that. Um, But I don't want to get into that too much yet. So you, this time playing it, you fished it out, you put it into the GameCube. Yeah. You booted it up. And how did it feel? (laughs) Um, Like an old friend. No, I hadn't played it in quite a while. It kind of does feel like an old friend at first. Yeah. And and like the music came back to me and the story, because obviously... It's kind of like listening to a CD that you've heard a million times and that you always start with the first song. So you start with the beginning of the game, which I had seen many times. Now I get to the end of the game less often than Mm. I start the game. So I kind of went back to the beginning and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this story and the and yeah. um, the first two or three dungeons are war- it feels they're just warm. It feels good to be back yeah. there. <laughs> it's like, oh, I remember, you know, grandma and yeah. that whole thing. And first time island. First and- time getting to outset. First time getting to windfall and yeah. just really taking it in with all the people. So it's it was nice. nice and familiar. And then the further along I went, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. So it was kind of like seeing things new. Again, almost. I think, yeah, we can speak to it's also because we're kind of now talking about this game in the context of knowing things now that we didn't know back in 2003. Just the world now knows that there were a couple dungeons that were not able to be included in this game, that it got rushed to release, mm-hmm. that it was it was the only Zelda game, really, in my opinion. OK, so normally Nintendo is like, we're making a Zelda game and it's not coming out until we're done and you're going to have to wait. We're going to say it's going to come out this year and you're going to have to wait another year and you're going to have to wait another year. And yeah. they, they never rush their Zelda games. For, and when they come out, the Zelda games are, for the most part, fantastic. Mm-hmm. There are two times that a Zelda game got a little rushed. Wind Waker and Skyward Sword. And I got to say, Those you, can, are your you least, can feel it. Yeah, You can feel it. I guess they are kind of my least favorite. I had a lot of good times play, replaying Wind Waker. A lot of good times, especially those first like 10 or 15 hours. It was cool. Yeah. 
through through the temple of the gods, through going down to Hyrule, coming back up. It was that once it where it begins to really fall apart for me is when is after the bird fight. I agree. You know, like it's pretty solid up to that point. And then it kind of all falls apart. It really does. In that like it's just like, okay, go find stuff. Right. It literally <laughs> the second there is not a second half to this game. There really isn't. There's two other dungeons. But if you look at like, and I get it, we don't need 14, 13, 14 dungeons like Twilight Princess. They'd be great. And and I've already kind of criticized that some of those dungeons are half dungeons anyway. But mm-hmm. but like the original Ocarina was six main dungeons and then three pre-dungeons, right? Mm-hmm. So we'll just say nine. You know, if those first ones maybe don't count as full dungeons, but let's just say nine. Right. Uh, Twilight was up into the 12s, 13s, 14s. Skyward got a little weird where they it's like three, but four, but six. Um, Majora was only four. To, so to give Wind Waker the benefit of the doubt, Majora only had four dungeons. But boy, oh boy, does this feel like half a game to me. Yeah, because the, you know, you can obviously come upon islands, but you don't have to. You don't have to. So I completed this game without doing any of those um stone islands, you know, the ones where you go in and you defeat the bombs and stuff. I was playing halfway through. I got finally got to mother and child and I had to oh. message you. I slacked you and I said, how do I get into mother and child? You said you have to warp. And I said, there's warping. <laughs> it's not always intuitive. Like it's not, I was, I was sailing back and forth. Right. Because you don't, you don't, you might not run into the frog guy that gives you ability to warp in the first place. You might right. totally miss it. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's open world, but it's yeah. not, they could have done a better job of well pointing you in the right, I, or, I, you know, helping you in the right direction. I agree. The If we're reading between the lines and maybe we're being a little cynical, but if we're reading between the lines, basically what happened was the wind waker had to come out at a certain time. The GameCube was it had its ups and da- ups and downs. It had like a really pretty tight library of games that are fantastic, but as a, on a whole, that system didn't sell as well as Nintendo wanted. Mm-hmm. It certainly wasn't as bad as the Wii U. You know, d- Nintendo definitely kind of goes back and forth here a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. Um, hopefully, they've really nailed it with the Switch, and they just kind of keep going with that. Hopefully, from now on, we just get Switch iterations, and we don't necessarily have to get something reinvented. Right. But with all that said, <laughs> um, the Wind Waker, there. After the, okay, well, uh, so there is definitely a padded second experience. Second half of this game is super padded. And by, when I say padded, I mean they're just making you go across that ocean back and yes. forth. They're making you just find things left and right because, oh, we can get another hour out of this game if we make someone have to go hunt for an island. Mm-hmm. And you can see through those seams. You can tell. After the the King Bird fight, whatever the, that character's name is, it's King something. When that fight's great. Like the bird, you know, the hammer and the birds flying around oh, yeah, yeah, up yeah. on the the first real time you do Forsaken Fortress. Mm-hmm. Um. So anyway, so when the Wii U version was re released back in 2013, um, IG Anuma did some updates. He he he, along with a few other new directors, they repurposed, they redid some of the Wind Waker stuff. And I remember that when twenty when this game was announced, um, they were talking about. Like, oh, you know, the, the the community was saying, oh, will will they finally put those two dungeons back in that they took out? Right. And I think it's commonly believed that the place where you um, do the wind, where you pick up the big heavy head. Yep. And the other place where you go use the boots to walk into the wind. Mm-hmm. Those two islands were probably originally also going to be dungeons, full dungeons. Sure. Instead, all you do is walk into a dang room and learn your your wand thing. Oh, right, right. You know, in fact, in the original game, apparently there's physical code, physical polygons underneath those islands of parts of dungeons. Those are, uh, but you need, so you learn the song and then you go back there to do the dungeon though, right? Yes. Yeah. So in the, in the current iteration, at least on the Wii U version, which um, the Wii U version had a couple changes that I want to speak to here before we start talking about our dungeons and characters. The Wii U version, you go there, you learn you need something, you go somewhere else. I, you know, you go to Medley, you, you find, find her, it, right. then you bring her back, and you go back and forth and back and forth all these times. It's just adding stuff on. Maybe then you would have gone into a dungeon that would have been worth it, right? But there is like five or six back and forths just to get to the Earth Dungeon. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so when the Wii, so so it's been, it the Wind Waker didn't get, it got actually pretty good reviews when it first came out, but 
after a while, people kind of caught on. They were, I think everyone was so excited about Wind Waker. Sure. It got like 90s. And it got up in the 90s in reviews. Yeah. And it starts off really well, like we said. It starts off strong. It's like, ooh, we're back in it. I'm back with Ocarina of Time. Like, yeah. it's, it's there's a narrative. There's subplots with the pirates in the beginning. All of that dissolves away in the second half. Mm-hmm. Tetra literally disappears because she just becomes Zelda and gets put to sleep. <sighs> just... Oh, don't get me started on that. Frustrating. <laughs> However, those first three dungeons, um, um, the fire dungeon, the forest dungeon, and then the water dungeons that's not actually there, but then technically you go down. Like the, wa- the water dungeon isn't even a dungeon. You just talk to the fish. Yeah. Behind Windfall. Oh, I was I like, oh, I'm that. ready for it. And it I wasn't was like, a dungeon. That's it. And then you go to the Tower of the Gods, and that's actually only the third dungeon. Mm-hmm. Then after Tower of the Gods, you go back to Forsaken Fortress, and then it's just earth and wind. Yep. There are like five or six dungeons in this whole game. And at a time when it's supposed to be open world and it's supposed to be super exciting, um, I feel like it fell short. So when the Wii U version came out, um, this is what some of the things, some of the things that happened is they converted all the graphics to high definition. Fine. Uh, they inc- incorporated a lighting engine. And I already spoke to this point on a, on our breath of the wild episode. It's intuitively obvious to me that a version of the breath of the wild lighting engine is running in the wind waker HD. Hmm. Um, reboot or remake or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I suspect that that lighting engine is also running in Twilight Princess, the HD Twilight Princess on Wii U, which, w- which I don't know. We'll see. Um, I, I'm kind of now want to play that after playing the HD <laughs> Wind Waker because on, on the whole, I enjoyed 60% of my time playing this game. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. They made some changes to the gameplay. They streamlined the Triforce quest, which I need to ask you about. Ooh. They built a new item called the Swift Sail, and you actually get it on Windfall Island, and it helps your boat go twice as fast. Oh, I wish yeah. I had that. Yeah. Um, the, I noticed that just your cruise, when you hold down the R button to cruise the boat around, it's like twice as fast Ugh. as the cruise that I remember. In fact, it's so fast that when you're in the Tower of the Gods water part, well, uh-huh. oh, before you unlock the temple and you're trying to navigate the water going yeah, up yeah, and down. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was almost going too fast. I was like laying off the cruise because it was moving so fast. <laughs> oh, that would have been nice. Mm-hmm. Um, they replaced the tingle tuner. So the tingle tuner on the GameCube version <laughs> is the like thing. you're saying tinkle tuner. The tingle tuner uh, <laughs> had the Game Boy connection thing where you could see an overview map, which I did use back when I played this on the oh, GameCube. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any of that. I had the Game Boy player cord and all that kind of stuff. Well, not Game Boy player, but I had the Game Boy link cord. Mm-hmm. I still own those things. We are going to use those cords when we play Four Swords Adventures on the okay. GameCube. I found a uh, used video game store in Chicago that is selling uh, Four Swords Adventures, and so I think I'm going to pick it up. Cool. Anyways, um, and then last but not least, okay, yeah, they took the Tingle tuner and they removed it, and they added in this thing called the Tingle Bottle, which allowed people on Meverse to send- The Tingle Bottle? The Tingle Bottle, which allowed people to send messages on Meverse. Meverse is now down and out. It was defunct as of November 8th, 2017, so I wasn't able to use that at all, and I don't think I missed it, to be honest. (laughs) Probably not. So those are the changes. Okay. So let's let's jump. To, we, we're going to go through the dungeons in a minute. And I want to ask you about some of your favorite characters. But real quick, we have to address this. In my opinion, we have to address this Triforce quest that happens in the second half of the game. Yes. It is an obvious. I think everyone would agree, even people who love this game. And there were a lot of parts of this game that I loved. And I can't wait to get into the dungeons to talk of the parts that I did love. But it's so clear that it is a skeleton game in the second half Mm -hmm. with this Triforce quest. So I, because it was um, streamlined in the Wii U version, I only had to collect eight shards. How many did you have to collect? Seven. What? Wasn't it set? No, there's eight total. I thought you had to collect like 13 or 14 in the original game. No. I don't think so. I don't remember. Oh, eight. No, it's eight. I lied. It's okay. Eight. Okay. So maybe the the amount of collection was the same. What was it like for you? The first one was you go back to Outset Island. You go down into the crazy. He- you can hook shot up to the tree. Yep. Yeah. Now, are you getting shards by doing that, or are you getting maps to shards? Well. So is that maybe how I got different? shards? Okay. So I got maps, treasure maps, which Holy then you have cow. to, you didn't have to do this. You didn't have to take them to tingle and pay no. an exorbitant amount of rupees to no, get the all. maps red. No. So like I go down, into, I went down into the gauntlet cave on windfall or outside Island. Uh-huh. You battle your oh yeah ma- trial of the sword thing from breath of the wild. And then there's a little emblem on the ground and you play the gale of winds or whatever. Yeah. And then you get a triforce shard. You get a map, son. <laughs> you get a map that you then. No, no I'm out. To- Ooh, if I didn't have to do that, I would have a much better um, impression of this game because, okay, so you get maps 
And what I did, because it was just easier for me to do, is I got all the all the maps, and then you have to go to Tingle, Tingle Island, mm -hmm. and you have to pay him 398 rupees for each map. And if you're not Times careful, eight. you can only hold 500 uh, rupees at a time anyway. You get bigger wallets. From him or something? From fairies. See, I didn't get, I didn't do any of that. Yeah. So you have to do that. He even the first time you go there, he's like, ooh, you don't have a big enough wallet. Fascinating. <laughs> to, to hang out with me. I might like, have gotten her. one wallet from a fairy. I would, the fairy there islands, I would just, if I saw him, I'd go. If I didn't, I didn't care. Okay. Yeah. I, I tried to hunt them all down. I happened upon a oh lot of them by God. chance. Oh my God. I treated the ocean the way you treated Hyrule Field in Twilight Prince. Like, it was like, uh, only if it comes my way. I'm not going to explore. Ah. I'm going to just go straight to the task. And that's what I did in Wind Waker. Mm. I did not want to explore in Wind Waker. Because there's just so much dead time. That's what it is. That you're like, I don't care to explore. All that's over there is going to is gonna be like a, nope. a barrel that I can sail between. Yeah, I agree. Or a, a treasure chest with a joy pendant in it. I agree Whoop completely. I never use the joy pendants ever. No. I know what they do. I get it. I use them in the GameCube version a little bit, but I never use them for anything. I gave them to the teacher and she gave me. Oh, you know, you do have thing. to do that. No, oh, she that's gave me one the, of the deed shards. to the, That's yeah. true. That's true. I'm, I'm but sorry. That's all I did. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't go further than that. Um, I didn't do any of the trading items where you meet the salesmen on the different islands and you have the shop back at windfall Island, like, be able oh, to really? sell those. I didn't, I, I didn't care. I didn't care about so many of like the side things that you could do. I think what it is, and it's weird because I love not necessarily side quests, but I love spending my own time and going out and exploring in these games. We've right. certainly spoken to that point, mm -hmm. but I think in wind waker, there's a, there's a, there's a detail that by accident matters a lot. When you travel through the overworld in wind waker, it's a passive experience. You push that A button or whatever, and you're off. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to stop and do something, you actually have to take action. You have to stop sailing and go aim towards something. And, and like to change the wind it's direction. A totally, it's a totally different psychology than compared to, um, for example, in Twilight Princess, let's even just say, or, or frankly, Breath of the Wild, but let's just keep it to Twilight Princess because Wind Waker and Twilight Princess run the same engine. In Twilight Princess, it's like, Oh, this is a cool cove. I want to go look at that grassy area. I your act okay. So to move through the overworld in Twilight Princess, you have to literally push forward on your on your control stick. Mm -hmm. And you're, you know, you're swiping at bats and you're doing these things. You you have to you have to do an action to move. Yes. In Wind Waker. And you have to steer. You have you literally do no action to move. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. I would um It's the opposite. I would know of that fun. I have to go somewhere. I would put myself in the right direction and I would literally put the controller down yes. and like look something up on my phone. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, now I have five minutes to kill while I sail to this place mm -hmm. and I just don't care about anything and it's else. so weird because I've even told you that in Breath of the Wild, I love not warping. I love really taking the time to get there. I told you that like in Ocarina, I wouldn't warp because I was like, I want that to be part of the narrative. Even in Twilight Princess, like, oh, I have to go back here now. I love right. the emotional drama of like having to do these travels. Wind Waker, I was having none of it. I think also because that's also because Wind Waker, everything, the ocean looks the same. It really does. But in these other games, you have mountains, you have fields, trees, grass, yeah. uh, things that are interesting, which there are kind of things that pop up here and there in Wind Waker, um, islands, obviously, which if they're not very big, I'm going to be like, I don't, what's on here? I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, or those bit, little like posts that come out of the water. That, Which like, are all the, random. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't care. That, those what, look like all the other ones. The treasures and everything else. Once you can tell that they're random, you can feel that they're random. You stop caring. Yep. Oh, oh, um, oh, the posts, the enemy posts. Yeah. Those are not random, but but I see what you're saying. Yeah. But I thought yeah, you meant like the, how the barrels the pop up. It's so like, what do we do me, up there? It's not visually interesting or intriguing. Yeah. So because the ocean is so boring and not that I need high adventure at all, I love to take my time and explore forests and walk slowly through Twilight Princess, but the ocean is so monotonous that it does, it changes your psychology. It makes you think that it's a task that must be accomplished yes. and you just try to get to where you need to go as fast as possible. Yep. The opposite of what I want in a Zelda game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just did the math, by the way, and to get all my ding ding Triforce maps read cost 3,184 rupees. You had to do all that. Yeah. So at one point I had gotten six translated by Tingle, which 
Yeah. I don't need to hate Tingle more than I already do. But I did interface I with Tingle a bit and I did get some maps and I think I had to do that for a few, but, but definitely I recall getting shards for a lot of these ends of these tasks. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. so <laughs> I had to, I got six and then I had to find more money so I could get my last two <laughs> so you're just going around the ocean. Red. So yeah, I would just go around the ocean, dig up or, you know, pull up the treasure chest um, use my treasure charts, which is another thing I didn't really care about. I didn't decode like a single one. I did a couple. Well, I I didn't have to decode them. I just had to find them. So maybe that's mm, yeah. I guess I know what you mean. Well, I would have Tingle look at a few of these maps, but sometimes I found myself even once like a treasure was revealed, I was like, I think I still don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because I, this is, it's so funny in this game. I wanted a story. I wanted the narrative. It was like the opposite of everything I've ever said about other Zelda games, but this one, I wanted it. Right. Cause it starts off strong. It starts off. Yes. But then you're right. After you do the tower of the gods, then you're just like, Oh, okay. tower of the gods is the first real up to tower of gods. It's strong, but that's really, if you think about it, that is just, that is just up to temple of the time in Ocarina. And I think it's, it's a bummer because I like the Tower of the Gods level so much. Oh, everything's frozen. It's, it's super so cool. It's so cool. So cool looking. And so then after that, it just drops so precipitously. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm using that word correctly, that you're just like, oh, man. You know, mm -hmm. that part was so cool. And then it's just like tumbleweeds. If it were Ocarina, those first three temples are getting up to uh, the the uh, Temple of Light or the Temple of Time. Pardon me. Mm hmm wherein the game actually starts with Ocarina. Then you have six temples and the final thing. Yeah. The game starts there. Yeah. In Wind Waker, by accident and unfortunately, the game kind of ends there. Right. Oh, they tack in a wind temple. Oh, they tack in an, an earth temple. And those temples were fine. I, I enjoyed them to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But that's it. Yep. There's nothing else. Yep. And poor Zelda. So I found myself genuinely, okay, so let's do this. Let's transition here. I want to talk about favorite characters a little bit. Okay. And let's talk about Tetra right off the bat, and then I'm going to ask you what some of your other favorites were. Okay. Because I, how did you feel about Tetra in this game? Tetra's so cool. I agree. I liked her little winking, her sense of humor, her like, oh, I know you're, you're what you're doing, Link, and I'm going to pretend I don't know what you're doing for the sake of my dumb pirate friends, but like, yep. I'm here to, I'll help you out, and you know, she's... Smart. She's feisty. She's. I mean, she's almost cooler than Sheik. I'm. I'm just gonna say it. I honestly yeah. like as far as her engagement as like this kind of periphery character to Link that's helping him in his quest. Right. It's more interesting than Sheik. Yeah. She's. She can handle anything. And the fact that they then lock her in a tower, mm -hmm. <laughs> like Rapunzel, under the ocean. She gets revealed as Princess Zelda halfway through, Which, and you never see her again. She kind of seems disappointed about. Yeah. I like agree. I remember watching that that cutscene, and she. She almost, you can kind of read it on her face. Like, she's mm -hmm. like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, I'm a princess. Okay. I agree. She clearly so much would rather be a pirate. Um, and it, once you get to the end of the game, luckily she can be her pirate, pirate self, self again. And even in that final Ganon battle, when she's still in her Princess Zelda form or whatever, it was nice to see her have a little bit of, um, like, act. Ac action again or activity. Right. She, yes, she's helping with the arrow of light, but even at the end of that cutscene, Link falls over and she picks him up and stuff. It was right. nice to like see that. I just, I just want to touch her back. I know. I was like, I had forgotten about that from the first time that I had played. So once I got to that point, I was like, she's really going to be, Oh, I'll stay here and pray. Yeah. Really? I kind of Girl, didn't, can't you come with me? I didn't notice that she was gone until like halfway through wind temple. And I was kind of like, I really have not seen the pirates in a while. Right. I'm going back and forth and left and right and up and down. And like all the cool characters are gone right now. Yeah, such a bummer. So Tetra's cool. What are some of your other favorite characters in Wind Waker? I'm looking through. I mean, this is the introduction of Beetle. We kind of spoke about him in our NPCs. But Beetle doesn't get much to do. He, he, well, this is anything the, to do, really. This is the least exciting iteration of Beetle, but it right. is his introduction. Oh. Oh, I do like hearing him greet me friend, oh, I see. <laughs> friend Lily like that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm looking through a list. I can, I'm thinking of Medley. Yep. She's nice. That's fine. Yep. She's more interesting than the Deku guy, even though I kind of did get a kick out of his little cello leaf. Oh, sure. 
Fado or Fado or whatever his mm-hmm. his name was. Yeah, he was okay. Uh, Medley is, I like her a lot. She's very sweet. Yeah, I like um, that you... She cares a lot about the king that she's taking care of. I agree. I like that you meet her narratively in the beginning. You feel yes. like, oh, we've done our thing, but she comes back around. Now, maybe that was also them cheating and just saying... We need to grab another NPC. We need to make you go to another island. Mm-hmm. Not another island, but back to another island. And okay, okay, let's have it be Medley. She was a nice character. Yeah. But whether that happened or not, I enjoyed seeing her again. I enjoyed doing that temple with her. It was a nice continuity. Yeah. Um, the, guy, the the kid with the snotty nose is disgusting. He's mm-hmm. memorable just because he's really gross. I always yeah. hated running into him because it's just gross. This big, long snot bubble hanging out of his nose. I have nose. a five-year-old niece, and she is playing Breath of the Wild right now. Ah. And she's pretty good at it, actually. Um, she plays it exactly the way. Like, I'm in so in love with how my niece, Quinn, plays this game because she basically just goes to, like, Lorena Village <clears throat> over by the uh, Luna Village, Lorena Village, over by the ocean. Mm-hmm. She just hangs out. <laughs> she talks to the shopkeepers. She walks sure. into one of the things. She said, Uncle David, this is my house now. I said, okay. And so she would pretend that she, like, literally walks Link up to the fruits on the table, and she says, okay, we're making dinner. And then she walks to the bed, and she'll just kind of climb the cliffs. She has a, a horse that she named Bubblegum. She'll take <laughs> Bubblegum out on the things. If she sees a bad guy, she will she likes to climb the mountains and practice jumping off with the sailcloth. Like, she lives in the game, and it's so fun to see. She asked me if there were other Zelda games. Mm-hmm. And I did have Wind Waker HD downloaded on the Wii U. I said, well, there's this other one. It's kind of like a cartoon version of Zelda. Would you like to try it? And she said, yeah. She never left Outset Island. <laughs> she was perfectly happy on Outset Island. She's just walking around, talking to people. There are not that many people on Outset Island. I know, either. but she was pretty satisfied. However, she uh, came across the Booger Boy. Mm. And she wanted to stop playing. She <laughs> went, oh, no. Oh, gross. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no, I do not want to talk to that boy. Oh, no, he's he's disgusting, and <laughs> yeah. he will chase you around, and she too. wanted to go back to Breath of the Wild, then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, let's see who else. I like the disco dancer. Oh, my gosh, he is so out of place. Tell me, tell me why you like That's him. That's why I like it, him. Because he is it's from like, another time. What is this even... And the whole reason for him existing is that so you learn the song to change night into day. Which I never did. Oh, you don't need to. I know. <laughs> I had a feeling. I did it when I played it on GameCube. Yeah, I did um, because I remember there was like a side quest where you had to take a picture of the moon, the full Mm -hmm. moon. Mm -hmm. So you would use that song to advance the days and nights until you came across, which that was a cool thing is that the moon was in a different phase and that would change the location of the ghost ship and all that stuff. So that was cool. That's true. Um, But then... So that's really the only thing that you would really use that song for other than to like do the different stuff in the ta- in, uh, Windfall Island that's at night versus the right. day. So the auctions are at night. I just like to, to light up the uh, windmill and stuff like that. I just waited till night. I never did that. I couldn't that figure that out. I didn't know where the well, power switch dude, was. The power switch is in. A, there's a ladder on the back of the building. It's oh. not cool. <laughs> it's not obvious, I mean, or whatever. I mean, not that it needs to be obvious. It's it's so weird because I feel like this was such an interesting experience for me because we've spoken about the ways you like to play games, the way I like to play these Zelda games. We've spoken about that a lot now in many episodes of this show. Mm-hmm. And this game tested me. It made me accidentally want the opposite things of what I've been speaking about what I want. Mm. It made me want more story, more characters. It made me want to have more, like, it wasn't, the things I like weren't, I think because there wasn't enough live in it type of atmosphere, Mm -hmm. you're not going to live in it while you're out in the ocean. The ocean's the worst. Right. Whereas, you know, Hyrule Field's the best. Exactly. I mean, I'm just joking, but you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I understand completely. Yeah, this game, it was like too easy to go linear Lee, like, Tell me about that. Uh, it was just too, like, like I'm saying, you don't need to do a lot of this stuff to progress. You don't, not a lot of the side quests just aren't that cool sounding. So it was like yeah. too easy to just get it done. And I like exploring sometimes, um, mm-hmm. obviously breath of the wild, you have to. So mm-hmm. I'm learning how to enjoy that a little more, but with this one, <clears throat> excuse me, it was just, yeah, too, too simple to go through the motions. I think I there guess. was a tone. There was a tone in this game that I found after you know, the first 10 hours of playing it or something. Because honestly, in the beginning, I was all in. And we're about to talk about the dungeons. And we're going to talk about some of the really good stuff in this game in a mm-hmm. minute here. But um, it felt like tasks. It felt like the 
remember how I told you the thing I like the least about Twilight Princess is when I walk into a tavern and instead of thinking like, ooh, who shall I talk to? I accidentally might think, all right, who does the game want me to talk to next to make the next thing happen? Mm -hmm. And that kind of, for me, breaks the illusion. And if a game gets to a point where it breaks the illusion enough where I just start thinking that, maybe that's my own problem, but like, you know, okay, it's, I get, it breaks a little bit. With Wind Waker, Every single task, ironically, even though there's this quote unquote open world ocean, every single task felt like, all right, who's the person I'm just supposed to talk to to do the thing? And it was so vague that even the side quests felt completely remedial. They felt like I, I had no motivation to it's do like any of them. you didn't need to talk to any of those extra characters. I found myself completely not caring about the entire universe. <laughs> wow. I'm serious. That's a serious statement. I found myself not liking being in this game by yeah. the second half. So, uh, you know, some of the side quests are you have to take pictures of stuff. Eh. Didn't do any of it. Yeah. And mm. normally I love that kind of stuff. You have to, yeah, you have to take a picture of a guy who's in love with someone and they're going to mail a letter and you have to hide and wait for the, or something like that. Yeah. Nah. Now in Majora's Mask, that's absolutely one of my most favorite things about that game is that hmm. you have these three days and everybody has their little life and you get to learn all their little details and it's great. So why didn't I care about it in Wind Waker? I think it's because the, it accidentally, there was a paradigm shift and that paradigm shift was from this this anxiety of having to get across the ocean. It's not fun. It's the worst part of the game, not the best part of the game. Yeah. Anyways, let's do talk. Let's talk about some of the good stuff here. If you don't mind. No, no good things. I didn't, I don't mean to get so upset about this, but it was <laughs> and again, like the first half of this game, I was in it. I felt warm and fuzzy. I loved all of it. Hopefully yeah. we're going to talk about some of those things. His now. Little sister's so cute. I just wanted more of the good stuff. I wanted more dungeons. I wanted more characters, more storyline. Anyway, it would have been cool to get um, Errol, his sister, into the story. Easily. Easily they could have worked that into the second half. Yeah. She just shows up on the pirate ship at the end like, hi, I've been here the whole time. Yeah, like, why didn't she have some stuff to do? You could, uh, that would be cool to have her do more stuff or have her be involved more. So the game does start off strong. After after our first quick little thing at the Forsaken Fortress, we go to Dragon Roost Cavern, which you and I spoke about a bit two episodes ago on our Fire Dungeons episode. Mm -hmm. But let's let's return to it just for a moment. Um, Dragon Roost Cavern. How did you feel about, how about this? Dragon Roost Island before the, before the dragon. When we meet the first time we meet the Rito. Yeah. Um, it's probably my favorite music in the game. I love the music yeah. that goes along with that island. Um, I, I think there was stuff on that island that I could have done that I would have had to come back to it to be able to do like climb around or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was more to that island than I really got to interact um, with. Yeah, there was a, I, I, I bombed a few things in the second half when I went back yep. for her and found some extra little caves and stuff. Yeah, and I don't think I did that. So that I probably should have. Um yeah. the mail I mean, at sorting the end of the game. day you get like a red rupee. Like you get you're like, oh cool, this was fun, but I did this for twenty gems. Yeah. And I get it. I you know, it's not about getting the reward after the boss. It's about the experience of playing the boss. I'm all in on that. But when you're doing trivial things and then they're for like a reward that you can't value, right. What's going on? Did you get the golden feathers and bring them back to that guy for his girlfriend? Never touched a golden feather. Okay. <laughs> so I got, uh, he wanted like 20 and I think I ended up with like 13 cause they're not very frequently got, uh, obtained. So you yeah. can get them. I know from the little hovering guys that you have to like hit with your boomerang. Sure. The little hover plants. Yeah. Um, other than that, I, I don't know where you can get them. But so a guy wants like 20 for his girlfriend and I'm like, eh. and then there's the mail sorting game, which is kind of Oh, I saw the mail sorter, but I, oh man, I am like such a grouch right now, but I, I apologize, <laughs> but I was trying to have an authentic experience with this game. I didn't even talk to the postman. Oh yeah, that's fun. I think I thought I remember there being more to it, but it's really just sorting things and just then you get right. rupees. Um, it's Wreck It Ralph too. Yeah, I, I did like that. The island in and of itself was kind of like a pre dungeon dungeon mm -hmm. to the. Um, yeah, arriving is cool. The rest of it, um, you Learning. get to figure out what's going on with the with Valu, the dragon, and see what's going on there. Um, talk to Medley a little bit, and then the wind mechanic to get into. Yeah, the dungeon was very cool. nice. I agree, and that's another one of those places where we're seeing the particle effects are informing yeah. the puzzle. That was cool looking. And I remember the first time I played that game, I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, right. how do I do this? It was kind of a cool puzzle. Totally. Um, yeah, Dragon Roost was great. Yeah. And then the temple itself was was cool. I thought it was, I wrote that the island and the temple itself were very easy, but that stupid boss was hard for me to sure, sure. defeat, which we had uh, briefly talked about in our fire temple slash dungeon episode. Um, 
just that it took me a while to be able to mm-hmm. hook on to the tail and swing across the room, blah, blah, blah. So the level itself was easy. The boss was a challenge. So it was a goma, a good mix. Yeah. Good old goma. I have a little bit of trivia about, I pulled this off the internet, but I have a little bit of trivia about Dragon Reef's Cavern. And apparently the music is a mix between uh, the Death Mountain Crater and the Dodon- Dodongo Cavern. I looked that up too. Did you see that? It's on one of the wikis. And uh, that's yeah. kind of cool. So I- that feeds the the canon that um, Dragon Roost is the top of Death Mountain. Oh yeah, that's right. I think I had seen that. And I went back and listened to it too yeah. after I read that and I was like, oh yeah, I kind of do hear some of the cool. elements of both of those in the music. Because we the, the coolest thing about Wind Waker is that loosely it's all, it is one-to-one a sequel, albeit much later, to Ocarina. Yes. It does exist in a in an actual it's not one of these like Majora Mask different world Termania things. Mm-hmm. It's it is that is Hyrule down under the ocean. That is the Ocarina time right. Hyrule. Um the ocean above. That is the ocean the same ocean that continues into Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. Actually Spirit Tracks technically they find a new continent and that is Ooh. if if canon continues that will become the new Hyrule, which that's actually kind of exciting with, oh, yeah. with uh, Spirit Tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, I like all the little Easter eggs of Ocarina and, and Wake, Wind Waker that you kind of come across. It was nice. Let's yeah. talk about the Forbidden Woods. Okie dokie. Uh, We've spoken about it a little bit in our Forest Dungeons episode, mm-hmm. but you get the boomerang in this one. This is the one where you start on one side, you have to do all the, you have to, a little bit, it's a little tedious uh, flying up the flowers to help save the Deku tree. Oh, yeah. I didn't love that the Deku tree looked like a cartoon. I kind of liked the more realistic looking Deku tree, but I was fine with it, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then you finally fly over to the actual dungeon and you have oh, to right. kind of uh, move the air. It's another wind mechanic to get to the middle island, to get to the other island. And once you're there, that one's a fun one too. That is that. That is the dungeon that's very vertical. A lot of moving parts, a lot of moving platforms, moving vines. We spoke about it in our second episode and I loved it. Um, sometimes funky physics with some of the wind blowing in there where you blow a spinner and maybe it moves a platform or not. Yeah. Yeah. I had some trouble with that every once in a while where if you didn't aim it exactly right, you're not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it kind of took a few times to, to get it quite right. But ultimately I felt that was a totally satisfying dungeon. And the first time I played this game on GameCube, I was like, I, I was thinking to myself, all right, this is the Dongo Cavern. Like, this is only the second one. I cannot wait for the hours of entertainment that are in front of me. Oh my goodness, we are only we are just warming up into this game, is what I thought. You uh-huh. know, and I kind of accidentally had the same emotion on this replay, even though I knew better. I, I didn't remember that that there's nothing after. Yeah, so I feel like I had the same feeling you did and that I did not remember how little there is in the second half. And so I was playing these levels like, oh, cool, this is fun. Forbidden Woods happens. I'm saying to myself, I can't wait for the next one. I'm ready for the water one or whatever. We go to the water, nothing. (laughs) Nothing. There's no water. And then they go, well, here's here's the gem anyway. And then we go to the now third thing, which probably should have been the fourth or should have been the Temple of Light or whatever. Temple of Time. I keep saying Temple of Light. I apologize. The Temple of Time, the Tower of Gods, and that's kind of a water temple because there are water mechanics, which yeah. is a bit of a bummer. Like I actually accidentally remembered that as the water temple. So oh, when I went and talked, I didn't to remember the, for that at all. The Jabu Jabu, essentially the Jabu Jabu character. When we were talking to him, I was like, "Wait, no. When do I get in and do the yeah. water up and down stuff?" So I wrote, "I got Jabu's pearl by doing basically nothing?" Question mark. Correct. That's what I wrote down. I know. Like, oh, okay. Okay, they just give it to you. It. I mean, you have to bomb the wall down. It's nothing. But that's, that's it. They just add that in afterwards, you know? Yeah. And it's so funny because I just got done playing Minish Cap as well. And I know we're not reviewing Minish Cap, but Minish Cap does this really clever thing where you actually only need to collect four items. But there's multiple times where you're in a dungeon and you lose an item or the item's not there and you got to figure out why. Mm -hmm. So they actually get more than one dungeon out of some of their items in Minish Cap. And here it is the opposite. Also, you get the Wind Waker with like no ceremony to it at all. Like there's not it's like the the boat is like, oh, yeah, here's this thing. And you're like, (laughs) what? Okay, like yeah, this is literally what the game is named after. It's the way Why he gets, isn't there more yeah. pomp and? So it's Zelda throwing him the ocarina in ocarina. But there's something cinematic to that. There's a whole cutscene where that happens, there is, right? You're right? But Wind Waker is just like okay here. And then Link, and you're like, uh, Twilight then, okay. which is after this. But Twilight is that whole wolf transformation. It's an entire part of the game in the beginning. Yeah, and this is like 
here's a baton. Here's a baton. Or, or, you know, here's a. Yeah, you're right. Here you go. It, yeah, you're right. And so it's we, like an afterthought. You do tower the gods. You get the hero's bow there. Fine. That's cool. Uh-huh. But we have a boss that I think you might enjoy. Godan. Another floating head with hands. Who sneezes out arrows. This is the one that sneezes out arrows? I thought that was in Twilight oh. Princess. Oh. No, maybe this guy does sneeze out arrows. It's oh, another. I, I was I was mixing them up in Twilight Princess. That's right. Oh, okay. Well, this, yeah, definitely this is another one of those shoot the eyes on the hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't That's find this. That's why I got it mixed up with Twilight. This boss didn't seem particularly difficult, but he was fun. He was cool. He's fine. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. Uh. And then the Tower of the Gods, the Ocarina stained glass windows. Yeah, those yeah, were very, very nice. cool. Seeing the sages, yes, down there was super cool. That was awesome. I remember just walking around and looking at things, which is you know one of the very few times in Wind Waker that you, you want do to that. do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was pretty awesome, kind of walking around. Yeah, and it, there is a a moment somewhere around the Deku Tree. So early in the game, you start realizing, oh, these islands are going to be tiny. Mm-hmm. Like when you first get to the Deku Tree or, or the forest deep woods forest or whatever it is. Yeah. You're doing a little bit of a puzzle to get up through the river. Yeah. And you're like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm ready. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And you get in and then you start realizing, wait a second. I think every single time I come to one of these islands, it's going to be like one or two little tasks, bomb a rock, hook shot a thing. Mm-hmm. And then I'm in. And then when you go to the broken water one, you can't even literally, you literally cannot even stand the broken Island where you have to go then talk to Jaboon. Oh um, yeah. You can't even walk on that stuff. I mean, I think you technically can kind of glitch and get on some of it. And often your prize for like getting through an island is a map. Hooray. Yeah, I know. Homework. Yeah, exactly. Um, however, okay, so Tower of the Gods was neat. Loved the whole, f- it was creepy. It was cool. The, f- the frozen. Black and white, grayscale. Yeah. Um, going out of that castle to the other side yeah. and getting to the bridge and not being able to go through is heartbreaking. I know. Because you're like, oh, this looks so cool. It looks like just Could, like Ocarina. If we, were to, if we were to play what if, if we were to. It's totally unfair to, to to Monday quarterback, as they say. But like, if we were to say that, like, they easily could have put three more dungeons there in Hyrule. Then, like, yeah, let's, because let's face it, if we're counting, which we don't need to, Majora's Mask only had four. But if we're counting, we've had three dungeons, and that's it so far. We need six more if we're doing the Ocarina model. Mm-hmm. We get two more. Yeah, we literally have more dungeons on the intro than the actual game. If you're looking at it that way, I wonder if Wind Waker was kind of like. An inspiration for Breath of the Wilds, like the islands were Breath of the Wilds. So there are a lot of connections with Wind Waker and Breath of the Wild, in my opinion. Some of those enemy towers. It's like you can see some of the Wind Waker Mm. thoughts coming Mm -hmm. through in uh, Breath of the Wild. The genuine, some of the random stuff in in Wind Waker. Breath of the Wild does it correctly. Wind Waker was onto something. And in 2003, I think a lot of us still had glossy eyes and like we didn't see some of this. Yeah. So Godan happens, then we go to the Forsaken Fortress, we get the Skull Hammer, you fight mm-hmm. Phantom Ganon, another little sneak around thing, but at least this time you have a sword and Ugh, stuff. Yeah, because I hate the Forsaken Fortress. I hate the the circular design of that was always super confusing to me. It was even a little confusing for me, yeah. And I'm good with maps, but it was hard. Two levels and a circle. So you could go mm-hmm. in either direction, and I would find myself doubling back on accident yeah. so many times. And so at least the second time you go back, you're right, you can just kick the pig enemies butts yeah doesn't matter you don't have to sneak around hitting the lights you have to hit the lights to make it so they don't see you when you're sidling up the tower yep that took me a while to i kept thinking i could do it it was i was being (laughs) a little headstrong to be honest i should have just i could do anything all right come on well because i'm kind of starting to get used to breath of the wild i'm kind of start thinking of getting used to like no if you can make it work in the moment make it work if you need to put a piece of weapon down to make electricity happen Make it work. Mm -hmm. I started accidentally not thinking old school Zelda, where old school Zelda's like, no, 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 you got to go do the puzzle the way it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was making that mistake. I also tried to climb every single tree by accident. (laughs) Nope. Nothing. Denied. No walls, no trees, but it's okay. I think I tried to climb a tree once or twice too, and I was like, (laughs) However, at the end of Forsaken Fortress, we get I think kind of a cool boss battle: the Helmarok King, the mm-hmm. Big Bird, mm-hmm. and uh, that's kind of neat. I actually really thought the Big Bird was going to play a bigger role. I thought it was Ganon reincarnate something. Nope. After that battle, it disappears, and maybe it disappears because that's the end. Maybe that's all you need. But they introduce it as a character in the beginning, right? You think it's going to be? You never learn anything about it throughout the whole thing. Um, yeah, I'm confused. <sighs> I guess I know what Ganon's role in this game is, but he does not seem as fleshed out as he could have been. So, Hey, let me challenge you on that. Is he more or less fleshed out in twilight princess? No. What? What? 
uh, in Twilight Princess, Ganon? No, Ganon really. is less fleshed out in Twilight Princess is what you're saying? He's just kind of, in Twilight Princess, I remember he was just kind of involved you, to have Ganon there because there's Zant yeah, is really right. the... You, you had mentioned that Ganon was kind of an afterthought in yeah, Twilight Princess. Yeah. He's a little more present in this He's a little more in, in Wind Waker, yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. It's kind of cool to see Ganon be kind of chill. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's kind of chill. And kind of fat. A little fat. He's kind of just hanging out up there. He does definitely feel like a person. Yes. Yeah. Not like some kind of deity or something. Yeah. Maybe not since Ganondorf have we seen him just kind of be a person. Right. And I, well, I guess what I mean is that I wish, yeah, that bird was more tied to him or Mm -hmm. was involved more after you beat him. Maybe somehow. I don't know. But after, after the Forsaken Fortress, the second Forsaken Fortress, after the bird fight, Mm -hmm. it really to me feels like every single narrative thread just falls away drops yeah yeah I, and then I, you don't know why you're doing anything yeah <laughs> and so there are the two temples after that the mm-hmm. wind and the earth well you bounce around a bunch you gotta go find the the big heavy heads and you find the the boots and all that kind of stuff you gotta yep. bounce around mother island all the mother child island you find you keep bouncing and then finally you yep. get into the earth temple mm-hmm. and you get the mirror shield there oh yeah that's right yep and uh, that one, I kind of enjoyed it. I actually, I kind of enjoyed it because I was like, finally, I'm back in a temple. Like I, you know, I want to love the temples, even though I've previously said I love hanging out in Hyrule Field. At the end of the day, Zelda is about the temples. And at the end of the day with Wind Waker, you know, there's the least amount. I always get the Earth Temple and the Wind one confused when so I'm thinking about them. But yeah, Earth okay. is the light mechanic with the with mirrors. Medley. Yep, yep, yep. I like that one better than than. I enjoyed the it wind more one. than the Wind Temple as well. Yes, because hi, the Wind Temple is all about being able to fall down and fall <laughs> off the it's edge true. of things, and that's where I excel that's at true. Legend of Zelda games. I thoroughly enjoyed the um, Wind Temple boss more than the Earth Temple boss. Even though the Wind Temple boss was kind of just one of those plant bosses again that we've been speaking about lately. It's a big, huge dragon worm, but really at the end of the day, it's just a thing sticking out of the middle. Remember you uh, hook shot his tongue towards you? In the, oh, I'm jumping. I'm jumping to the Wind that's Temple. right. I'm jumping. Okay. The Earth yep. Temple boss w- didn't do anything for me personally. No, I hated that one. Mm-hmm. It was just like a bigger version of those other ghosts. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. It's just a bigger version of those other ghosts, in my opinion. Yeah. No, the other one, um, I like that. Yeah, that's right. That's the one with, it was coming out of the sand. Mulgara. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the one where it was coming yeah, out of the sand. Yeah, it comes out, it's got the weird side mouth yeah. flapping. It was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Ooh, she, you just gave me shifty eyes because it was gross. And n- No, I just, it, it's a dirty looking boss to me. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, all right. <laughs> um, all right. You can cut that I think out I can if you imagine. Um, I think I can imagine. That one is cool though in that the floor changes. I like that part of it yeah. where you have to kind of run around to make sure it doesn't, because I got grabbed by that thing so many times mm. and, you know, spit out again and that was frustrating. Now, on the HD version, there was actual 3D geometry to the waves of the sand. Was ah. that also true in the GameCube one? I don't think so. I think mm. you just had to make sure just, not to get sucked into the black hole of it's sand. It's just like a texture or whatever. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but that one was more challenging for sure than mm-hmm. the other, um, shine the light on the ghost. Oh no. Right. There wasn't too much to it, but no. So I like the other one better for sure. So you get through, we get through the wind temple mm-hmm. and, uh, and that one felt like it took forever wind for temple? me, wind temple, because again, the falling. So there were times oh, that yeah. I ended up on the level that I shouldn't have been on. I needed to go up and instead went down like there were. I don't like levels with a kind of center area and like a complete vertical. So the forest temple is a get, bit like that in this game. I get lost. I get yeah, lost. I, I can understand. In the wind temple, especially the forest one, I didn't have nearly as much trouble. With. That's more like small rooms that have that mechanic. Yeah. But the wind temple does have kind of that shaft. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. With the floors that rotate and all fin- that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Willy Wonka's dang chocolate factory <laughs> in there. And I didn't like it. <laughs> now um is there any anything that we so one thing i think that we could say that's positive about the earth and wind temples was they were both reimaginings of the the uh jabu jabu mechanic where you're carrying someone around to do another thing yes but done better done better i agree yeah. i got really sick and tired of going left center right center with my wind waker you know oh, all sure. the command things yep. it's like yep. couldn't we just put that on a button or something yeah I but agree. it's okay um, but I think like they let's speak to that a little bit. Um, yeah. um, Medley. And then I just forgot the little Deku guy's name. Fado. 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 Um, let's talk a little bit about how that might have been done better than in Jabu Jabu. In um, your opinion. So we start just, with Medley. Yeah. You're not just carrying someone because they need to 
get somewhere like they're oh, and yeah. you can control them too so yeah, obviously right. that's completely different that you can actually control this thing they don't and they get, have abilities sorry yes um if you it might be the same when if you drop them or leave them somewhere they come back in a kind of more convenient way you don't have to go like all the way back to the beginning to get them which what happens is they get dropped like medley gets dropped in a cage in that halfway point so you still have to take control of her and fly her down oh but you um you can't just run up to her. In fact, I accidentally got a little lost on that spot. I will confess. Oh. She got eaten by a floor master, whatever, in mm-hmm. one of the smoky parts. Mm-hmm. And Which, by the way, I hate those things. Oh. <laughs> I know. And well, there's also the shrieky, the shrieky mummies. Oh, are yeah. In those are horrifying. One. They're a little less scary than Ocarina. But they chew on your head. They do. <laughs> so and then so she got reset to that middle thing where the big sun statue is that you light up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was up there. I was. I went to that room and I'm looking up there and I'm like, well, how do I get up there? She's in a cage. How do I? I have to drop down. I'm looking at my map. I'm. I'm. Just, I'm like, okay, there's got to be a way. I get up around. I get up around. And I'm. In, I'm embarrassed to admit that about a half an hour later, I was like, oh, control medley. Oops. <laughs> and no, I just flew I, that, her to me. I had a couple of those moments as well, but no, I just think it was better done. It didn't annoy me. I always hate like people always. I think reference Resident Evil where you just have to drag their arm like, come on, I have to protect you, but you have to come with me. Like Resident Evil 4. I hate those kinds of missions, but for some reason in Wind Waker, I didn't hate it. Um, I agree. I was thinking about that too. I was like, oh wow, these are the two main dungeons, if we're going to think of it that way. The two big, cool main temples in Wind Waker are actually just, um, not fetch quests. uh, um, I forget, there's a a term for it. Yeah. uh, Mission, something mission. Yeah. I'm blanking right now. <laughs> escort mission. Yeah. Yes. There's just two escort missions. That's what I thought. But they they are a bit, but it's not the worst thing in the world. They, no. These people can take damage, but they have abilities. Yeah. They could have expressed it differently. It could have been literally a hat that you put on that gives you some extra abilities. They decided to take the flying abilities and put it on. Oh, mm-hmm. I remember in the wind temple, I was kind of like, dude, why am I planting these trees? Oh, yeah. Because it felt like, because the very first time you plant trees, it just reveals a treasure chest. Mm-hmm. I thought this doesn't make any logical sense planting trees, but then obviously with the hook shot, then I was like, okay, 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 okay. That's that's why also it took forever for me, I think, because you had to go back through so many things over again. Um, Yeah, I didn't mind it. I liked it. I liked the, it made things a little more interesting that you hadn't seen yet in this game. And that was a cool part to the game. Not really, like we said, not having too much to it after the temple. At least you got to do these things, which were kind of more interesting. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I I was fine with the added characters. In fact, I even kind of thought it was nice. And then you have to go find some shards. Uh The eight shards, I think without, I think we are not risking being cynical by admitting that certainly, especially after playing all eight of them, like those all really felt added in. Mm -hmm. There wasn't, there was never really new geometry. Some of them were just gauntlet runs. It was just like, let's throw a bunch of enemies. Some of them are puzzles. Some of them are here, there. Maybe, maybe, just maybe the teacher one was the only one that was kind of creative where you had to go oh, do yeah. something and bring it around. And maybe they were going to use that for something else anyway, for another item. Who knows? Maybe they build at least one more island to make it so that's not as obvious that these are just added in. Right. But that added hours and hours to the game and not in a fun way. Like, why couldn't you just get the shards after each Within each dungeon or whatever. Well, the truth that is, would be, the I, shards probably don't even need to exist. They were added in to pad out the second half of the right. game in post production or whatever, or actually in pre production, I guess you could say. Yeah. So it was like half a game, basically. And then they, I think they added, needed to hit a deadline. Yeah. And then had to pad up that second half. There could have been so much more. Mm-hmm. Now, what's there is good, is fine. I mean, like the, the, the five dungeons are all fine. Oh, the first three, I think, are qu- pretty nice. And the wind and, and earth ones are fine. I was a little more negative on them because I knew that they were the last dungeons. I was a little sour this time playing mm-hmm. them, knowing that really nothing much was after that. Right. The first time I played it, I was thrilled. It was literally thrilling playing this game up to the second Forsaken Fortress. Up to that bird fight with the hammer and everything. We pull on the mask off. I was or not pulling it off, but hitting it with the hammer with the big bird. Yeah. I, I was I was engaged the entire time the first time I played this. So yeah, I could have gone from the Earth and the Wind Temple straight to Ganon's Tower. He might as well, and not be upset about it. Right, I would have been happy with that. But then I people wasted my time. You know, maybe we'd be sitting here complaining about, oh no, there's nothing after that. Yeah, <laughs> but probably. like we're still saying that because it's just so obvious. Right, right. There's it, still nothing. You know, maybe you just go, okay, I get it. It's going to be half a game, but then to, to to try to trick me and pad it out is kind of makes me angry. Yeah. Um, and I did like 
Ganon's Tower. I don't know if you want to go there already, but let's do it. Um, yeah, we got we got to keep moving here anyway. So yeah, I let's do Ganon Ganon fight. And we can wrap this up. Yeah. So I didn't love that I had to do bosses over again. So I never like that. Yeah. And I know it sounds lazy. like we're being so negative, <laughs> but it's because it's lazy. Because when Zelda is its best, is when it's not lazy. Right. It's when it's inspiring and and interesting and logical and makes you do things you didn't think about and it has overarching puzzles. That's when Zelda is its best. Yeah. Not when they just. Do this again. Pump out a bunch of enemies at you out of a Which pipe, Which they do basically. in Skyward Sword, too. They do in Skyward Sword, too. Um, well, Skyward Sword had a similar fate, or a fit similar post-pre-production um, mm, problem. Right. So, <laughs> let's just do this again. Um, the rest of Ganon's Tower, I kind of liked. I liked the, that it was kind of its own temple, in a way. Its yeah. own dungeon. Um, I liked that it was a little... I wasn't expecting it to be that. I thought I would just get there and fight Ganon and it'd be done because it too. was just so empty so far. So I did like that there was more to it than I expected. I didn't like that I had to fight the the bosses mm. like over every again. single one. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. And it was also weird when even in that first boss, you're like, so the dragon's back in this great. Like, yeah. <laughs> couldn't they at least replace the tail with something else to at least. Right. Kind of. It was just copy paste. A little bit. Yeah. That was a bummer. But you get through, we get through all the boss battles again. Uh-huh. And uh, then we get up to, I kind of think that the Ganon fight, I was very pleased with the Ganon fight. Me too. So let's talk about it. Um, Puppet Ganon is really cool. I was going to say, I have a note here. I love Puppet Ganon. Yeah. Really mm. cool idea. Like several different phases, not simple or right. easy at all. I Maybe three to four different phases. Yeah. I think it's. It becomes a, like almost a slug Four. for a while. Then it's almost a spider for a while. It's three different like animal things, yeah. I think. And then like the final Ganon. Um, so definitely a challenge. I def I needed to use a fairy once because I was getting my butt kicked. Um, As I was doing Puppet Ganon, I don't think that's what it's really called or whatever, but I'm, I, I call it Puppet. Is that what it's called? I, maybe. Maybe it is. Your face just made me think that. But anyway, Puppet Ganon. Um, it was kind of cool because Ganon wasn't a mystical, magical mutant creature like right. again a little bit in this game ganondorf is i've been accidentally calling him ganon earlier in this episode but ganondorf is kind of a human mm -hmm. i don't know if he ever even flies even in his battle he just walks mm, yeah i think so I and think ganondorf is a physical puppet maybe it's magically inclined or yeah. inspired but um so we do Ganondorf first, which is cool, because so yep. often you do it the other way around. Though Twilight Princess did have a Ganondorf before Ganon, mm -hmm. or a Ganon before Ganondorf. So you use your boomerang to cut down the strings. That and part's then cool. And then boomerang cut down the strings. He's doing his weird slug thing where you're trying to hit the eye in the background, and then it goes back. So the yeah, the one part of it I didn't like was when, was when he was like the dragon version where he's just going all willy nilly all over the place. I okay. got hit so many times because there's no pattern to that. He just rams into you over and over and over again. Hmm. And it's it's hard to hit um, to aim your arrow into that's that when the tail eye is at the tail. Yeah, that's he's what I was just, just like going about. bonkers. Like, it does seem like it. Yeah. That part was not so good because that just seemed random to me. There wasn't much skill involved in that. The others hmm. you had to, you know, aim for the rib. Uh, aim for the ropes or whatever the strings and cut those down and then shoot the arrow. This one was just kind of like so going can everywhere. You, when you're in your arrow mode in GameCube, can you also still walk around or are you stationary? I'm trying to remember. Because in the Wii U HD version, there's some controls that are much nicer. I don't want to keep comparing the two, but there's um, when you go into arrow mode or any first person weapon mode, uh, the hook shot, the grappling hook, arrows, whatever, boomerang, you can use Breath of the Wild controls on the controller. Mm. So you go straight into arrow and you can just aim Breath of the Wild style and it gives you a lot of dexterity. And I don't remember that in the GameCube version. I don't know if you can't or if I just didn't do it. Furthermore, in the Wii U one, you can even walk Link's body around a la first person shooter style. So even when you're in arrow mode, you can still strafe around yeah. and aim and things. I and that's how I ended up doing what I called slug cannon, but, but the dragon mode yeah. where he's bouncing all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I went into first person and I just started circle strafing like I was playing Halo. Oh, I, I don't know. Maybe I just didn't figure it out, but it was difficult for me. And then the very last version, um, was cool and that, like you said, Zelda was actually finally involved again and helping you out and you had to reflect the light to, on yeah. him and that part was cool. I like that. And that was a decent enough challenge where I was getting hurt, but I was able to beat him in one try. Mm -hmm. I love that he wasn't actually scary. He just 
thought it was all funny and stuff. Yeah. Like when he started laughing oh, after he thought the it was king, hilarious. I was kind of like, I think I'm into this kind of Ganondorf. I think I'm into this characterization of him. I don't mm-hmm. mind. I maybe even prefer other versions, but I was very cool with him just being a dude. Yeah. <laughs> Just being a dude. Just being a guy. You know what I mean? Like even in Ocarina, he's like playing the organ. He turns around and he immediately is flying in the air. Right. Um, um, in Twilight, he almost immediately, well, he possesses Zelda and then becomes the big pig and stuff like that. It mm-hmm. was kind of neat just having him be a guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I liked it. I liked the whole Ganon battle. There were enough phases to keep it interesting, but yet not impossible. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Um, the, there's waterfalls in that battle. And I remember those waterfalls from the Wind Wake, from the GameCube version. In the Wii U version, they are gorgeous. Oh. They're kind of see through and there's distortion. They look great. Hmm. They look really, really good. That I gotta version. Say. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll lend it to you anytime. I don't know. But, um, but it's it was a nice one. Maybe maybe give yourself a little bit yeah, of time because right. even the, again. even the condensed Wii U version um, was trying towards the end. Sure, sure. And then after you you beat him, yeah, then you're told you have to find a new mm-hmm. Hyrule, new which Hyrule. I totally forgot about. I was like, oh, yeah, it's kind of neat. So then all of the next game, Phantom Hourglass, there is no Hy- there is not a new Hyrule found yet. Hmm. There's still just a bunch of islands. It actually has Tetra and Link are in it. Yeah, and it's you kind of know, know that Tetra's, that's continued. It's super cool. You know that Tetra's in it. You know that Tetra's Zelda, quote unquote. Right. And um, then finally in Spirit Tracks, they do find a continent. And then Zelda becomes, Zel- Tetra becomes Zelda again, but she becomes like a spirit. It's a game mechanic thing. However, yes, they do. Re- that is all realized later. It's kind of hmm. cool that Nintendo followed up on that narrative. Yeah, that there's continuity. Yeah. I, yeah, I was fine with the ending. It was sweet. Yeah. It was a little weird that Link was still in his lion boat. I kind of was like expecting him to be in the pirate ship. Right. And I think on the top of Phantom Hourglass, he is on the pirate ship with them, Mm. but whatever. Because (laughs) the lion boat is not in Phantom Hourglass. Okay. In fact, you actually use steamboats in that game. Interesting. Because you draw your path with the pen and then the steamboat does that. So it's a little different than the wind thing. Sure. Anyways, so any final thoughts or anything? We've been talking for a while. Um, Yeah, starts off strong, finishes kind of weak, still fun to replay. I want to love this game, and there are parts that I do, and it only makes the parts that aren't awesome hurt more for me. Yeah, I'd probably, if I had to give it a letter, it'd probably be like a B minus, C plus. Yeah, I almost feel like I wouldn't blame someone if they played to the bird and then... And then we're just "Eh." like, okay, yeah. (laughs) maybe you go do Earth, Wind, Temple, whatever on your own time. But I feel like even just as a little half a story because nothing changges after that story wise. I've said it a hundred times this episode, but like all you need to know is like, okay, guess what? Zelda becomes Tetra and they sail off story wise. That's almost all that happens. Yep. Yep. And it's cool that you can, so you beat the game and then it's like, oh, you can change your save file and blah, blah. blah, And then you can go back and explore more. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. That is awesome (laughs) because you kind of don't get that with the other Zelda games. Right. You can't go back. And Mm -hmm. I mean, even breath of the wild, you cannot, (laughs) Right. Not exactly right. Not right. If you go back, you go back to pre defeating Ganon. Yeah. Pre to anxiety again. Like <laughs> everything is still bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But oh, yeah. I wanted Breath of the Wild so bad. I wanted to be able to walk around and talk to everybody I and know. say, like, isn't it cool that Ganon's gone? I know. But it's not there. Yeah. All right. Crazy. All right. So ultimately, I think the Wii U version, it was like $20. I'm certainly not trying to sell it, but I'm comfortable that I spent that money on it. I had many hours of fun with this game. It sounds like the things that they did change to it made it better than the GameCube Oh, I do know that um, there was a Wind Waker 2 planned, and uh, they started started making it, and um, that got converted into Twilight Princess. Oh. So Wind Waker 2 was going to happen, so they were probably going to continue with going, finding Hyrule or something. Um, the tri- Twilight Princess for GameCube runs the same engine that Wind Waker runs, and so they quickly converted to realistic style graphics when Wind Waker didn't sell as well. Thank goodness! I'm so glad that Twilight Princess exists. <laughs> I am too. I am too. And not to take anything away from Wind Waker, no. and in my opinion, the Wind Waker Wii U version is beautiful. Even the GameCube version is kind of beautiful. Yeah, yeah. For for what it is, it's it's beautiful. Controls are nice and easy to use. I think. Did you do okay with that invert stuff? I didn't recall having a an issue. The C stick. Yeah, yeah. No. Cool. All is all is well. That's great. That. <laughs> awesome. Well, maybe we get out of here. Yeah. Kate, this was a lot of fun. Um, I was very nervous about talking about this game because I don't want to be a hater on some of this stuff, but I think everything that we're saying is fair. I think it's fair. And there's a lot of really there's a there's a fair amount of good stuff in here as well. Absolutely. You guys should let us know what you think about Wind Waker, because I know people are from mm. either camp. It's awesome, it's terrible, maybe somewhere in the middle, like where yeah. we are. Those first three temples are real temples. They mm-hmm. are right there as real Zelda temples. 
Earth and Wind are technically real temples too. They feel a little less aesthetically thought, like they feel a little more like, oh gosh, get it finished. Right. Like, you know what I mean? It was just like corridors and stuff. Anyway. Right. Um, some of the battles are cool. It's too bad the story dissolves away. But the story starts quite nice. Yeah. It had so much potential. And there it is. <laughs> Zelda learned their lesson and they made Twilight Princess. They, you know, Twilight Princess even came out years late because they put so much into it. Good. Which was cool. <laughs> and they learned. Alrighty. Well, all right, Kate, if people want to talk to you a little bit more about Zelda stuff, they can find you on Instagram. Yeah. At, um, I'm, I only take cat pics. Uh, on and people can find me on Twitter and Instagram by searching Raptor paint. And our actual show is another Zelda pod on Twitter. And I yes. think it is another Zelda podcast on Instagram. You can go to our website, another podcast.com where you can find links to our Facebook page, our YouTube page, iTunes page, Google Play page, all of <laughs> all it. The it's things. all there. We have all the things. embedded um, episodes from YouTube on our page. We are impossible to miss. Or you can subscribe to our XML from there as well. I don't know what the next review episode will be, Kate. Maybe it'll be Minish Cat. Maybe it'll be something maybe. else. But I think we're going to make it so that you host that one because we are technically going back and forth even yeah. on our hosting episodes. I'd like it to be something that I have not yet played. Maybe it possible. is Minish Cat. Maybe yeah. it's... Honestly, maybe it's five or six episodes from now. I'll give you plenty of time to play Minish Cap, but maybe it'll be that. <laughs> cool. Sounds I'd good. I'd love to do it. Awesome. All right, everybody. Well, we'll see you later. And Kate, I'll see you in a couple weeks for another episode. Sounds good. Okay, bye. Ooh, drawn out. <laughs>